So, you need your hero to wield the blade of fire. Not a problem. Real quick, I learned how to do this from watching Pierre-Eric Bacot's tutorial here. I just translated what he did in Blender to Unreal, since their shader graphs are almost identical. So, check him out if you want the more long-form explanation. So, the key to this effect are two black and white maps. One is the flame design, and the other is a flame mask. Now, it's important for the flame design to be seamless because if it's not, you're going to get some really ugly seams flying across your effect. Now, the easiest way that I've seen to make a seamless design like this is actually to go into Blender, get a quad, open a window for the image editor, set it to paint mode, and then open a window for the shader editor, create a new image, make it 1024 by 1024, name it, and then in the material editor, hold shift A, image, and find the image you just created, and plug it in like so. Then on the left, change the mode to texture paint and go ahead and color the whole thing black, then set your brush to white. And in the image editor, press N, go to tools, and at the very bottom, you'll see tile X and tile Y. Set them both to true. This means that when you paint your maps, when you reach the edge of a texture, it will automatically loop around and make it seamless for you. Once you've set that up, just casually drag some white streaks across, then go to your smear tool, slash it a few times to make it look like fire, and then reduce the size of your brush to get those more fine wavy details. When you are done, save the image and repeat the process to make a flame mask. For this, make sure the edges of the image are all pure black. You do not want white on the edges. Import both of those images to Unreal, right click, create a new material, and drag in both images. Hold T and left click to get one more image. We're going to set this to the default low res blurred noise texture. Then click the material and make sure it's set to translucent and unlit. And now from here it's just basic image movement like I showed you in the last few videos. Right click to get a texture coordinate node. Hold S and left click twice to create two parameters for X and Y tiling. Set their speed to something like 1 and 0.4. Get an append node, a multiply node, and an add node. Plug them into your fire design UV. And now we also want to add some simple noise distortion to the fire. So to do that, right click, get a panner node. Set speed to negative 1, get a multiply node, set it to 0.1, add everything to your noise and drag them in to combine it with your flames to get something like this. Awesome! Now duplicate everything, delete the parameters and replace them with new ones specifically for the mask. Set them to something like 0.9 and 0.5, change the panner to something like negative 2, and then we want to get a multiply node and plug everything in like so. Fantastic! Now we just need to add a color ramp. Go to your content browser, right click, create a color curve. Set the first point to something like 60, 23, and 5. Set the last one to something like 0 0.06, 0, and 0 0.001. Then left click and create two new points in between and set them to 90, 6.2, and 0.2, and then 90, 0.3, and 0. Save, then in the content browser, right click, create a curve atlas, name it, open it, and then add the color curve you just created. Save, then back in your material, right click and add a curve atlas row parameter. Then add your atlas and your curve to the bottom left. Then drag from the red of your flame into the atlas and then add that into the multiply leading to your emissive color. You done. Now you have a fire material that you can drag onto any mesh you want, or you can even use it as a Niagara particle to make sword trails like I showed you in the last two videos. Either way, this is how it works. I will leave a link to the Blender file in the pinned comment in case you want to make your own seamless texture masks. As usual, patrons can download the original materials in the Support Squad Discord, and if you'd rather just not do any of this yourself, you can find the project file for this on my shop immediately to save time. But as always, the info to learn how to do all this stuff is free right here. So, hope that helps, and as always, I'll be having a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.